World Six, City of the Living Nightmares. Do you remember me telling you about dreams being misleading and nightmares being a refuge? Well, Satan lied. I have wondered why people call him the father of lies. I was in a world of, yes, nightmares. The book had been acting weird recently. It always used to flutter whenever certain people came close to me. I've theorized that I was encountering other harbingers, and the book wanted me to meet them. I'll tell you a thing about the harbingers. We're never friendly around one another. There is this sort of myth that if you kill a harbinger, you get their powers as well as their soul. Great incentive to kill each other, I guess. Anyway, back to the world I had to destroy. The book fluttered and started doing its thing when I reached the ruins of a city near my hometown. The city had been prosperous before the Second World War, but got bombarded in constant air raids, and the locals moved out. When I reached the town square, the book leapt out my bag and did its thing and enveloped me in a sickly green sphere. I was dropped into a padded cell of a mental institution. I immediately panicked and started to bang on the walls as hard as I could. A little fact about me. I have a fear of mental institutions, prisons, and halfway houses. Never could figure out why, though. A doctor and a couple of nurses in white uniforms strode inside the room. They all bore an uncanny resemblance to the doctors and nurses in my nightmares. The doctor walked up to me and put a hand on my cheek. A fine specimen you are. Young and energetic. Restrain this one and give him as much as he needs. He roughly shoved me down and I was put in a straight jacket. Great. I thought, the only thing left is for the guy to torture me every day with electrical shocks or a lobotomy or something. I wish I hadn't. It was the singular most stupid thing I could have done. My nightmare was a world. Torture and lobotomies galore. I had become a lab rat because I couldn't even keep my mind stable and make sure not to think anything stupid. I remember exactly how many lobotomies were performed upon me, sixty-seven, and how many times I was given the shock therapy, four hundred seventy-eight, because the traumas of the book can scar you for life. Joy and happiness. Every day, I was given MREs and some liquid that barely qualified as drinking water. Then, at exactly 10 p.m., I was taken to be given shock therapy. Every week, on Fridays or Saturdays, I was lobotomized. The doctor said, we're just removing parts of your brain that aren't necessary for your immediate survival. He always smiled very eerily after saying that. After surviving this for God knows how long, my doctor suddenly changed. The original doctor was a man in his mid-thirties and had a teardrop-shaped face and his body was very skinny. He also wore round glasses. His hands were weird too, with abnormally long fingers and smooth palms. The new doctor was a woman in her late twenties. She looked generically pretty, something most people find attractive, 
but what made her different were her eyes. You see, over the years I spent in this personal cocoon of nightmares, every person's eyes except for mine had been just blue balls in their eye sockets. She had actual eyes, pupils and all. I was surprised and smiled a little, and soon as she saw this, she grew fascinated. You can smile? I thought the doctor had removed every unnecessary part of your brain. She scanned the files in her arms. I rolled my eyes and tried to speak, but found myself unable to form any comprehensible words. I pointed at her pen and the file. She gave them to me and undid my straight jacket. I flexed my finger and grabbed the pen. I found that I could write. I carefully wrote. He did a shabby job, as usual. The man is a living representation of my pet peeves. She smiled and wrote something in her journal. She asked me a couple more things, and as she got up, she didn't put the straitjacket back on and left the door open. I took my chance and left the place. As I stepped out, the only thing I found was a huge, vast, open black expanse. I had flashbacks to the time I was in the void. I touched the floor and was relieved that there was none of that liquid on the floor. I kept walking for a few hours and found a huge set of double doors. I gingerly touched it and found that it was safe to touch, but gave me static shocks with every contact. I pushed the doors, and I saw a sight I wish I had the privilege of not seeing. Humans with pure lightning pierced through their hearts. Their eyes were glowing, and some of them were screaming in terror and anguish. Others had a look of pure fear on their faces. Beautiful. Isn't it? I heard a voice from behind me. Well, for a sadist, it might be, I replied, startling myself. But I'll say that it's a sight. The person laughed, and their voice was so beautiful. I almost let my guard down, but then I remembered that this could be the master of this world. Don't sweat it. You'll be leaving in a bit. Just look at me before leaving. Every instinct in my body told me to look at her face. But there was a small voice in the back of my head that said to keep walking ahead. I kept walking, looking straight ahead, and blacked out. I woke up in the ruins of the city. I looked to my hand and found the orb. It was a mixture of purple and green, and its power was to make every creature that was ever imagined in nightmares a reality. I pushed it hard against my chest, and it absorbed. Unlike the other orbs, I felt a searing pain in my chest. I felt like I was being branded by a hot poker. My eyes started watering from the pain, and I felt myself fall down on my knees. I thought of summoning one of the creatures of nightmares. I remembered my friends talking about their nightmare creatures, and I tried to summon one. It was a mixture of a cyclops and wendigo. When I summoned, I realized how horrifying it looked. A one-eyed, tall, 
pale-looking figure with antlers and a huge jaw with rows of sharp teeth. I gave it a mental order to roam around this place and scare anyone here. It nodded and galloped away. Five minutes later, I heard the screams of two people. It soon returned and looked at me as if expecting another order. I willed it to return to wherever it came from. The orb worked. I now could make anyone's worst nightmares come true. I'll see if I go crazy with the power. Sleep tight. I hope that your closet doesn't have my monster in it. If it is, well, you'll see what happens. <laughs>